Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. This is question number three from the um, Cambridge International um, Examination P2, Paper 2, Extended 0580. This is Paper 2, Variant 1 from the May-June 2020 exam. Question number three here tells us about Mrs. Salaman, who gives her class two math tests. The scatter diagram shows information about marks from each student. So on the x-axis here, I recorded the marks for test one and test two on the y-axis. So for example, this would be the mark that the, that one student got for test one and, the, and that same student got this mark for test two. So this would be the mark this, this student got for test one and that would be his mark for test two. That would be a particular student's mark for test one and the same student's mark for test two and so on. So they're asking us now to find the highest scored or the highest mark scored on test one. So test one is this x-axis. So we got to look for the highest score on the x-axis, which is this mark over here. If we follow where this goes down onto the x-axis with a thin line, we can then work out exactly where it goes down to. Okay, it's not fitting here. So of course you'll be able to see the whole page in front of you. But you can see that this line goes all the way down to that point, which we can see is going to be, it looks like 66 to me, because each of these are two units. 62, 64, 66, 68, 70. So this is 66. So the answer for part one is 66 marks. That's part A. Then part B says, write down the type of correlation shown, shown in the scattered, scattered diagram. Now a scattered diagram, if I just zoom out a little bit so that we can see it a bit more clearly. A scatter diagram is a diagram, as we said, where you have two sets of information about the same, um, like in this case, the same students. So this student got this mark in test one, this mark in test two. So we're comparing two different kind of things about those same um, kind of um, people. And <coughs> what we can see here is that, you know, the people who got high marks in test one, um, they also seem to get high marks in test two. Like the ones that have got high marks in test one also got high marks in test two. And the ones that have got low marks in test one also seem to have lower marks in test two. So as you know, one of these increases, the other one also increases. If the test marks in test if their marks of test one are higher, the marks in test two are higher as well, and vice versa. Though if the marks in test one are lower, the marks in test two seem to be lower. This is called positive correlation. These are lined up in such a way that they make some sort of like a positive gradient. All right, um, general positive gradient. So this is called positive correlation. If the light, if if they were going in this way, this kind of general direction, that would mean that the ones who got higher in test one would get lower in test two. One is high, the other is low. That would be negative correlation. This is called positive correlation. So here we just can write positive. That's absolutely fine as your answer. One mark and you got it. Then it says draw a line of best fit on the scatter diagram. Now that's something that a lot of students find difficult. Um, and they don't expect you to all have the same line of best fit at the end. It depends on your uh, skill of drawing, but it's not really something that they're going to be too strict about. So basically what you need is a line that follows the basic kind of gradient of these lines. Okay, follows a basic kind of, uh, you know, the slope that these, these points are going in. Okay, so it's following the slope of these points. And there's roughly the same number of, of, of crosses above and below this line. So something like this would be, um, you know, a suitable kind of um, line of best fit. Okay, so there's kind of like, if you can see roughly, you don't have to count them, but roughly there's the same number above and below. And we're following the general trend of the gradient of these points. You know, if you were to see that going in that general trend. Right, so like drawing a line, for example, like this would be completely wrong, even if there's the same number above and below. It's not just having the same number above and below, it's also having following this, the, the kind of gradient of the, the way the points are going. All right, so it's important for us to understand that. So this would be completely wrong, okay, as would a vertical line be completely wrong. If you, you know the same number on the left and right, no. You have to follow the general slope of the, of the, the points as they're going and have roughly the same number above and below. So something like that would be sufficient. If you were slightly different from this, there wouldn't be such a big deal. All right, so it's important for you not to get too fussed about it. It's just worth one mark, and that's that should be fine. Then it says, Hamish scored a mark of 40 on test one. All right, 
he was absent for test two. Use your line of best fit to find an estimate for his mark on test two. Okay, so they're going to assume that you know this is a accurate indication of how somebody would do in test two. So what we can do is we can go to his mark on test one, all right, and we can we can draw a line from there up to the um, scatter plot and then across and we can see that his mark would be somewhere like 48 okay because again this this has got the same scale 2 4 6 8 10 so that would be 48 okay so you can write your answer down as 48 that would be an estimate for his mark on test 2 and there we have the answer if your line of best fit was different from this slightly and you gave for example 46 or 50 Okay, then I'm sure they would accept that as well. Okay, if, if your line of fit was because it's not, I mean, I don't even know if my line of fit first of all is a perfect one. You know, you can't really, uh, <laughs> when you're doing it by just by looking at it, of course, it's not going to be perfect, but they're not looking for perfection, so that's fine. All right, so if you've got, for example, 46 or 50 because your line actually went through those points, that should be absolutely fine as well. Okay, so um, there should be no problem with that. And sometimes they even have a follow through mark for this. Like if you drew your line of best fit completely wrong, for example, you did it something like this, okay? If you did it like something like this, for example, which is of course quite obviously wrong, and you wrote down 40 for his t test two, they, if they have a follow through mark where it says, uh, as long as you read it from your, from the line of best fit that you drew, then the examiner might give you the mark for that as well. So that's, that's you know, you might lose the mark for the line of best fit but you might get the mark for the estimate from the line of best fit that you drew. Okay, so there's the answer to question number three. Um, other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist that will appear somewhere in this area over here. Um, other questions from the topic of statistics will appear in this area over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching. See you soon.